to our today's episode of the Public Finance Trail Program. My name is Regina Kinyolando and with me are our resident panelists from Kerio Center Organization. And on my immediate right is uh, Mr. Timothy Kiprono, a program officer in charge of uh, governance and social development at that organization. And on my left is uh, Mr. Emmanuel Kongin, assistant program officer in charge of governance and social development at Kerio Center. Welcome to the program. In our pre very preceding episode, we looked at the role of, of different actors in the decision-making process. And uh, when we are talking of actors, we mentioned the public, we mentioned the legislature and the executive. And today, we really want to explore, we want to go further, and we want to look at the, uh, the World Development Fund and how it helped in uh, derailing the budgeting process at the county levels. That's our main topic of discussion today. Mr. Kongin, to start us off in the discussion today, uh, it's quite evident that uh, since the devolved system of government came into power, we've seen most counties uh, experiencing certain challenges, especially in the implementation and approval of the budgeting stage. And uh, most, we've realized that uh, some counties even went to the extent of not realizing they're approving their budgets as at um, 1st July in the financial year 2015-2016 and we can mention some counties like uh, was Wasengishu, the Transoia and the Nandi counties, they didn't have a budget as at the 1st July which is a requirement of the constitution and we realized that mo some of the contributing factors of the delay could have been as a result of the World Development Fund, the, the disagreements that occurred between the executive and maybe the, the, the assemblies. Can you sh please shed some, some light on that? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, review of the causes of delays in budget enactment in the three counties, uh, that is Wasingishu, Transoya and Nandi, uh, shows that there is inadequate evidence of uh, equitable distribution of resources uh, across the counties, uh, which prompted the assemblies to cut uh, funds from the executive proposal to to be able to allocate funds for ward development, and that is a uh, ward, ward uh, level projects. So, uh, some of these counties, for example, uh, Wasingishu, uh, called this ward development fund. Uh, sorry, it's actually not was English, it's Tanzoya, which called uh, their, their award allocations or award development fund. Mm -hmm. But for the case of Nandi and, Trans and uh, was English, uh, they actually wanted to have a direct role mm -hmm. in make, coming up with the decisions of the ownership and the process of implementing these uh, award level projects. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Timothy, having known that, we know that the, the major role of the Assembly is to approve the budget. Mm -hmm. That is reviewing it and maybe submitting recommendations to the executive. In real sense, this is what is supposed to happen. But what really happens in the actual... Uh, I know that's very correct. Mm -hmm. the, the, the role of Assembly is to approve the budget, mm -hmm. uh, to make it into law. Mm -hmm. Now, um, unfortunately what is actually happening is that Assemblies are really literally meant the budget by actually editing mm -hmm. the budget itself mm -hmm. to reduce or increase resources from department or thoughts or even programs mm -hmm. you know or projects mm -hmm. you know uh, so as opposed to reviewing the budget like uh, you just said reviewing the budget mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, develop a report mm -hmm. which asks recommendations to the executive on what or which part of the budget is supposed to be reviewed you know mm -hmm. Uh, changes uh, here and there uh, between departments or programs, something like that. But remember, uh, mm -hmm. we, so that we, we are very clear, mm -hmm. changes on department allocation is actually a violation of, uh, of the county fiscal strategy. Mm -hmm. So if assembly changes, mm -hmm. it reduces money for at, at the for, at the budget enactment stage, reduces money for health, uh, you know, or, or changes the, the, the ceiling mm -hmm. at that point, mm -hmm. either up or downwards, then it is a violation of the county fiscal strategy. Paper. Remember, we say this is the paper that sets the series. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, and then it's approved by the county assembly, so it becomes a law. Mm -hmm. All right, so, for example, if you look at uh, uh, transfer, for example, they actually reduce, they will make about 24% changes of the development part of the budget mm -hmm. to create the money for world development uh, mm -hmm. fund, as, as Kongit just said. Mm -hmm. While, um, you know, uh, some of the things affected 
in, in the changes in transfer yeah, include actually conditional grants. Mm -hmm. Remember conditional grants in the previous show we said those are, those are resources coming to fund specific projects, you know, mm -hmm. uh, either from national government or from donor. You know, uh, donor says implement this program for me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and these are the resources. So you can't change that. But mm -hmm. the, the county assembly of transfer actually made changes even to conditional grants mm -hmm. and, and, and a few items like ongoing projects. For example, there was a, uh, they, they were building a revival hospital which was started in 2014. So there was it was to be a second phase in this year. But assembly reduced the funding for that project. And it is remember that project is a project which they approved in the previous year. Mm -hmm. So it fits logic like why did we approve and then all of a sudden we are, we are reducing the funding in the mm -hmm. second phase. You know, it, it, it doesn't really uh, add up. So for counties like Western Bishop, for example, mm -hmm. they actually match 50% changes to the development budget. Mm -hmm. So they reduce, uh, they, they, they reduce the development budget to create 50% uh, uh, of all development funds to cater for world level uh, uh, needs, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like uh, world level projects, 50% of the budget, mm -hmm. which is around a billion, mm -hmm. a billion plus, plus a few things here and there, uh, and shared equally across worlds. Mm -hmm. So it's like, County assemblies are not, it's like they've not really understood what is enactment oh. or approval of budgets. Mm -hmm. There's still challenges there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Kongin, uh, based on what he has said, suppose such huge changes, for example, like what was seen in Osimbisho County, as suppose such changes are seen in the within the budgeting process, what happens and how does it, how does the public initial contribution to the budgeting process affected by the executive? It's, it's a tricky situation to tell. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, when changes are, are made after consultations uh, with the public, then it renders the, the, the public uh, the, consult, the participation of the public useless. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes these uh, changes could be justified, mm -hmm. but uh, it shouldn't be taking away the right uh, of, of public input. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look, for example, at uh, washing issue, uh, one of the reasons that uh, the assembly gave when they were making these changes was that the executive uh, failed to do adequate public participation uh, when they came up with their proposals. Mm -hmm. So they felt that to, to an extent, uh, because there was failure to, to do public participation, mm -hmm. then these uh, proposals were null and void to mm -hmm. the extent that uh, they did not uh, involve public participation. Mm -hmm. uh, but then one other thing that happened is uh, when the assembly now came and did those changes that they did, uh, they also uh, failed to uh, consider public input in, in the changes that they made. Mm -hmm. So it's like because the, exec the executive did not consult the, the, the public, the assembly did their own changes mm -hmm. without also consulting the public. So that meant that uh, at the end of the day, at the end when the, this budget was approved, the 2015-2016 mm -hmm. budget for Singishu, uh, we can say that uh, the, public. The, the public participation mm -hmm. uh, was not done uh, when they were doing this budget. So we can say that this budget for Singishu 2015-2016 mm -hmm. had uh, very little public participation. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, a, a budget that captures uh, the public interest, the public interest okay. and what the public wanted to mm -hmm be in the budget mm -hmm. for this financial year. Okay. Yes. So Timothy, when you are saying that uh, other counties within the North Rift region are experiencing these challenges, but again we know that there are some, like the Gayomara Kuwait, uh, the West Pokot, they don't experience these challenges. What, are, what do you think they are doing differently? Yeah, so um, actually that's true. It's not all counties facing challenges, there are a few counties who are doing well. Mm -hmm. So, for example, counties like West Pokot, El uh, Gayo County, mm -hmm. and actually also Baringo County mm -hmm. uh, uh, are not facing uh, uh, this kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. Basically, one of the things they do very well is a comprehensive uh, public participation. They consult uh, public in, in a way that even if the proposals cost to assembly, mm -hmm. if assembly goes out to consult public, mm -hmm. they'll find this like what public 
once mm -hmm. is actually captured in the, in the document. Mm -hmm. So they will, not, they will not have a reason of using public participation as an excuse to say we are making changes here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. Which is, as Kongin says, in West English, that was part of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in, in Baringo, for, to be specific, is that they, they conduct two levels of public participation. One, targeting the general public, mm -hmm. and then another set, targeting professionals. Okay. Remember, there is, if you look at uh, the budget issues, it's like public don't have really the capacity to, to, to uh, you know, dialogue with the government mm -hmm. or the choices. But then the professions come in to fill in that gap in terms of the technical knowledge and, 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 and the like. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this actually minimizes the disagreements between executive and, and, and assembly. Mm -hmm. Because remember, if, if done correctly, in an ideal situation, mm -hmm. assembly is supposed to be representative of the people. Sure. So if they feel like the views of the people are not captured, captured. then they, they'll do whatever they want, mm -hmm. as long as they, they, they make sure that public input is, is captured. In addition, these counties, these three counties in the budget, demonstrate actually evidence of uh, distribution of, of, of distribution of resources to, to counties in an equitable way, you know, in an equitable manner. Some of this is like, some of these counties have their ADBs in, in place, mm -hmm. annual development plans that is, in place, in time. Mm -hmm. And these annual development plans actually list projects with details, mm -hmm. including locations. Mm -hmm. Location is in the sense that which word is, uh, are we implementing this project, you know. Mm -hmm. Some counties attach annexes to their budget, uh, which lists specific projects. You know, that's another good practice that happened within these counties. Mm. But one outstanding uh, uh, practice happening in this, some of these counties is Elge Maragot County. Mm -hmm. So Elge Maragot County did, uh, uh, or we can say they are way ahead of all the counties in Kenya, by the way, mm -hmm. because no county has done what they did. Mm -hmm. So they have this law called uh, Equitable Distribution of Resources Act. Mm -hmm. It's called EDA in, in, in short, for 2014. So this law, actually, sets the criteria of how the, the total resource envelope is divided uh, between wards and the county level uh, uh, projects, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then it also guides how each ward will get mm -hmm. resources, you know. And uh, we we'll, 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 we'll look at, uh, uh, we'll look at a, a snapshot of this law, uh, just the criteria, you know. Mm -hmm. So the criteria has around uh, 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 seven Mm -hmm. uh, uh, parameters mm -hmm. and one of these is uh, population. Mm -hmm. So population takes 30 percent of total development, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, 23 percent of the total development goes to uh, uh, flagship projects. Mm -hmm. Those are county level projects, mm -hmm. county level and ward level project, uh, sub county level projects, mm -hmm. not ward level. Sorry. Okay. And then 22 percent uh, uh, goes to poverty index. So each ward. Uh, depending on how much of the poverty index they contribute, then they get 22%. 8% uh, uh, goes to uh, uh, land area. Mm -hmm. Some wards are larger than others, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and so it also takes care of that. 5% goes to emergencies, mm -hmm. you know, uh, of the total development fund goes to emergencies. 2% uh, goes to fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. So counties, uh, wards which spend their resources mm -hmm. are rewarded because they spend, they absorb all the funds, you know, within the given timeline. And then 2% uh, goes to semi-arid uh, and, and arid areas, the, the gold asset, yeah? Mm -hmm. So some of these things is like, uh, you know, you, some in El especially in Elgeo, <coughs> they have three ecological zones. Mm -hmm. They have the island, they have the, 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 uh, uh, the escarpment, mm -hmm. and they have the lowland. Mm -hmm. So counties, the, I mean, wards which are in the lowland area are, are very semi-arid and, and some are very arid by the way. Mm -hmm. So that's the, 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 the act also takes care of that. Okay. So that is a, uh, that's what the does. We are taking a short break but stay tuned to KTS.